That's why, because of Surah Hujrat. And, and in Surah Hujrat, it's also the Surah of Adab. And you know, the students in Miftah know I teach etiquettes of seekers every semester, every year, the first semester, because I believe Adab is the key to anything. You can have, you can have all the merits, all the money, everything, but if, if you lack Adab, you lack everything, right? And so I'll just say a few important uh, quotes about Adab. Al-Adab wa ila kulli fadila. First of all, Adab is a means to attaining all virtues. If you have etiquettes, you have manners, you have the correct ethic, ethics, you, you can get far in life. It is the way to attain all virtues. Parents who are sitting here, they understand what I'm saying here. Now your kid, you know, you, you, came to this, you came to this country, you wanted your kid to have a good education, some of the best schools. But they got a degree, they got a good job, but they don't even know how to sit in front of you. What was the point of all that? What was the point of all that? And then you have somebody who doesn't have you know, a great GPA in high school, maybe he's not doing the, you know, the best major or not the best career path, but he knows how to shake your hand. He knows how to pick a plate up for his father, knows how to pick up the shoes for the mother, knows these small things that matter. It warms your heart, it cools your eyes, and the heart come, the dua comes out from your heart for that person. So that's why it is important. Adab is the means to attain all virtues. Abdullah bin Mubarak, he says, نَحْنُ إِلَىٰ قَلِيلٍ مِّنَ الْأَدَبِ أَحْوَجْ مِنَّا إِلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِّنَ الْعِلْمِ and I'll tell you what that means in an example. He says that if, if there are hours and hours of workshop for something of knowledge, usul of fiqh, usul of hadith, he says more important than that is one hour workshop on adab. We are more in need of a short or small dosage of adab than we are in, than of pages and books and hours and hours of ilm and information. When Shaykh Abdul Nasir comes and he speaks about information, you understand what I'm saying. We do have a lot of information, but we are more in need of even a little bit of adab. The youngsters who are sitting here, okay, how do, when my, my father comes home, what is the correct way of receiving my father? That is more important than any subject in your high school. More important. Because your Jannah depends on that. My mother comes home. What is the correct way of receiving her? Is it the right way? I stay in my room and I'm doing my homework because I have a very good, important exam coming up. But I see my mom's car pull up. She's about to walk out of her car. What's more important? What's the right way of receiving her? That's more important to learn that. And that doesn't take hours to learn that. It doesn't take hours to study for exam. It just takes a few minutes to learn what needs to be done. That's why that's more important. I'm not saying this. Abdul Mubarak was saying this. And I'm not gonna give a pass to parents. There's also ways of teaching kids. Students, your, your children, the uncles and aunties in the communities, there's also ways of helping the youngsters. All right, what is that method of adab? We have, we are, it's more important to learn what that method is. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. But that's why Abdul Mubarak is saying, this is more important, we are more in need of that. And I'll conclude with this because I always say this and it's also his statement and you have to follow along with this sequence. He says, how important is, how, how important is etiquettes and ethics and morals when it comes to actions? He says, look at the sequence. He says, Man tahawana bil adab. A person who takes etiquettes lightly. Tahawana bil sunnah. One day that person will take sunnahs lightly. And I'm going to give you an example. It's, it's, it, didn't, it, doesn't, it didn't finish yet, but I'll give you an example. Dhuhr Salah. Dhuhr Salah has fara'il, sunnas, and adab. The fard of dhuhr is four rakats dhuhr salah. The sunnah of dhuhr are many things, including the four sunnas before dhuhr and two sunnas after dhuhr. What is the adab of dhuhr? And he's saying a person who, is, who takes adab lightly, a day will come, well, they will take sunnahs lightly. So what is an adab of dhuhr salah? Please share with me. I'm gonna ask, someone want to raise their hand and tell me? What do you think an adab of dhuhr is? Go ahead, sir. On time, so he said, on, what's your name? Ahmad Bay. That's actually a sunnah. Because the Prophet ﷺ used to pray salah on time. 
And he, the, the, the most beloved action to him was to pray salah at its earliest hour. So that would be classified as a sunnah. Praying on time. What do you think? Is, what, give me an example of adab. You, you can't give any answers. Khushu. Khushu is part, great, great answer, but khushu is part of salah. And it's, it's, an, it's an essential part of salah. Any other sisters or brothers? Yes. Nafil. Nafil. That's a good one. Yes. I'll give, beautiful. I'll give you a real tangible an answer. Ready for this? When we were young, our parents had it. I'm a scholar, and I'm telling you 99% of the time, I don't even have this. Because we as youngsters are very quick to dismiss our parents' culture. Very quick. Oh, this is Indian culture, Paki culture, you know, Arab culture. That's true. There's many wrong things about the culture. But there's certain things that was embedded in that culture, like etiquettes, morals, saliqa, Urdu mein, they say saliqa, just the right way of you know, hosting people, that we can't just dismiss the entire culture. So my parents, they're not from this country, they, they moved there to become, you know, to finish, Sheikh Ali knows them, they, uh, to finish their medicine career and all that in Michigan State University. When we used to travel, the first thing that my, my, my mother and my father used to put in the car, even if we're going an hour away, 45 minutes away, was a John Maz, a sajada, a sajada in a sheet. They would always put that in the car. What do we do? Let me tell you what we do. I'm gonna be careful, this chair is, this is like, this is like really bad. What do we do when we go, we pray? We'll put it up afterwards, no problem. When I pray, this is what I do. I said, did anyone bring a, a sajada? No, all right. <laughs> this. Now look, if, if a non-Muslim sees you do that, he doesn't, in his heart, the, sorry about that. If a non-Muslim sees you, the importance of salah, like, like the sajada looks beautiful. You know, it looks like you're giving importance. You open it up, you fold it, you unfold it, you put it down, and then you pray salah. Now you put your sweater down, and there's some people who put like a small towel down, or a napkin down. And of course, some people don't put anything down. Your salah counts. But is that the adab of salah? That's not adab of salah. Right? And so our parents would take a sajada wherever they would go. In a sheet. And I can challenge most of you that we don't do that. Why? Because we've been so... We've been overfed just the do's and don'ts of Islam that we forgot the betweens. Like, don't, you can do this, you can't do this. This is halal, this is haram. But there is, a, the, the, the tears don't come from halal and haram. They come from following these things. The sincerity comes from these things. All right, so you, you're now going, and uh, next time you, this is an adab of salah. What, what's another adab of salah? I'll give you one more. Wearing nice clothes. Wearing nice clothes. Brother, if you have a sister, Rafi, if your wife prepares herself for salah the way the average woman prepares for a wedding, you are set for life. I'm telling you. Right? Why? The Salaf used to say, Rabbi ahaqqu man tajammaltu lahu fi salati. Khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. It's a verse of the Quran. Beautify yourself when you're about to stand in front of your Lord. Okay, yeah, I used to play over here. This, this place, this is where I used to break a lot of ankles, right here, right? This just gym right here, and I'm speaking over here. What, I'm not saying you can't just wear shorts and you know, leggings and a t-shirt and go to the masjid for salah, but is that the right way to stand in front of Allah? Is that, does Allah doesn't Allah deserve more than that? Right? And a person who continuously does that, that means you're taking adab lightly. The Salaf of Salihin, they used to wear the most expensive clothes before they would stand in front of Allah because I'm standing in front of Allah who's gonna decide all my affairs based on my salah. How do you prepare for a job interview? How do you dress for an interview with, you know, go to med, med school or a res, residency program? You dress nicely. I'm not saying spend two hours doing it, but be particular about it. It will help with your ghushu and khudu. It will help with your khushu and khudu to just dress nicely, wear good clothes, beautify yourself, 
This is, so this is an adab of salah. I'll give you two adabs. So man tahawna bil adab, a person who continuously takes adab lightly of salah. So praying dhuhr without a sajada, praying dhuhr without dressing nice and looking nice. A time will come tahawna, tahawna bil sunnah. A time will come where you'll stop praying the sunnah. Does that make sense? It's, it's, it, it's, it, it progresses like that. وَمَنْ تَحَاوَنَ بِالسُنَّةِ And a person who takes sunnahs lightly, a time will come, تَحَاوَنَ بِالْفَرَائِضِ You will start missing salah. وَمَنْ تَحَاوَنَ بِالْفَرَائِضِ حُرِمَتْ مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ And a person who takes faraid lightly, it's just fard. I'll pray later, a time will come where they will be deprived of the recognition of Allah 